Week two is already in the books, and here are three players which I'm targeting in Dynasty, depending on if it's a lineup or a best ball league. If it hasn't set in for you that week one is peak overreaction season, <gasps> then take a look at this. Now, these aren't my three Dynasty buyers, but T. Higgins, goose egg in week one. Drake London, goose egg in week one. And Christian Kirk, nearly a goose egg in week one. However, all of them rebound and have great week twos. Now, while the buy window is certainly closed shut on all three of these receivers, I want to take a look and show you why these three were people that you shouldn't have been panicked on. T. Higgins, week one. Joe Burrow was terrible. They're playing the Cleveland Browns. It's a terrible weather game. And he has zero catches for zero yards. You, know, you get a goose egg, people are going to panic. But the thing that we should have been looking at is the targets. He had eight targets in week one. He didn't catch a single one of them. It's going to be more of an aberration in a Bengals offense, even if Joe Burrow is going to miss a little bit of time here with this calf injury that you have eight targets and you don't have a single catch now in the case of Christian Kirk a little more concerning the target load was not there there was already concern with Calvin Ridley coming over that he would be the alpha in the offense and Christian Kirk would go to the wayside so the narrative fit the bill with Christian Kirk only having three targets and one catch in week one now week two he comes out and you see that the sample size is not nearly enough as you're getting a new feature weapon Calvin Ridley involved in week one week two Christian Kirk put that completely to bed with 14 targets and 11 catches had himself a hell of a ball game another reason to take a look at not just what happens in one week and how this can be an overreaction now while everyone loves the talent of drake london the offensive situation and the passing volume was clearly a concern to go along with his one target however i think we found in week two even though they did win the football game that it's not going to be every single week they play the carolina panthers and throw the ball 18 times this week they did throw the ball 32 times versus the green bay packers so you're looking at a situation i think where the volume may not be as consistent for Drake London but you saw when the volume had to go up for Desmond Ritter his focal point the guy he wants to get the ball to and Arthur Smith is primarily looking at getting the ball to is going to be Drake London he came back in a big way and the theme here is overreactions with too small of a sample size and when all of a sudden you add one more week the total body of work for these players is a lot different let's take a look at three people I'm buying that I'm looking at too small of a sample size where people are going to be fixated on one thing that I think we can exploit depending on your league format the first one is Deontay Johnson this one I'm buying in both best ball and in lineup. Currently nursing a hamstring injury, Deontay Johnson was just put on IR ahead of the game versus Cleveland on Monday night. Many managers are already impatient with Deontay Johnson, and the fact that he's going to IR is only going to increase that impatience. But here's the thing. He's still a target hog in this offense, and when he comes back from IR, he is going to be utilized heavily. But Adam, he only had six targets in week one. That's correct. On 43% of snaps. He had to leave the game. So if you think about the fact that he had six targets on 43% of snaps, he's on pace for at least 12 targets in this game a game they're trailing versus San Fran and the reality is they're probably going to be trailing in a fair amount of games this year and while that 12 target pace doesn't quite make him Puka Nakua as a complete target hog through two weeks he's right there with Justin Jefferson and Tyreek Hill as far as target pace he was to be playing this full game I'm confidently buying Deontay Johnson for a second round pick when he comes back from the bye he'll be returning in week seven I think he'll be back in full form and you'll see him pick up right where he left off the main thing to take a look at is your team and your roster construction as it's currently assembled can you afford to have Deontay Johnson on your bench. Dynasty buy number two is an alter ego, Mr. Unlimited. You got to be unlimited. That's right. You got to have the thought process of being unlimited. And I get it. A lot of people hate Russell Wilson. Understand why he's not someone you're excited about. The age coming off of last season. He's just not sexy in Dynasty. Oh, you're sexy. But you know what I don't care about? Is having a totally sexy roster. Russell Wilson for me is dynasty by number two, and here's why. After two weeks, he's a top five quarterback in Superflex. Wow. Now I understand, he may not be the dynasty asset, the elite one that he was four or five years ago. I don't really need him to be that. He's currently operating without Jerry Judy at full health. Not playing in week one, clearly not looking right in week two. He's got Marvin Mims, Brandon Johnson. Who's, who? I know there was the Hail Mary at the end of the game to kind of pad the stats, but this is a guy that looks a lot better. He may not be the old Seattle Russell Wilson, but he's looking a lot more like that form than he is last season's. And if his price is not going to change, keep trade cut has him essentially at the exact same price. His price is not changing at all. If he's a top five option right now through two weeks, granted a small sample size, but he's a quarterback 26 in Dynasty. What are we doing? Currently behind Mac Jones, Kenny Pickett, Sam Howell, and he's miles behind Jordan Love. I'll take Russ one for one for any one of Mac, Pickett, and Sam Howe. And if for some reason there's someone out there that'll give you any type of a plus, go ahead and take that too. Now while Jordan Love has looked very good, and there's a chance that he ends up being a legit asset in Dynasty, his value is surging. And because of that value surge, Be the rush. if you can go from Jordan Love and tear down to Russell Wilson, 
There's a big age gap there. But if you can make that trade, the player difference on keep trade cut is anywhere near the case. Najee Harris, Chris Godwin, Terry McLaurin, or Kyron Williams, sign me the fuck up. I want the Russell Wilson and the two pieces for one in that trade every single time. Warp is not out for week two yet, but I'm really excited to see after week two what Russell Wilson's warp actually looks like, his win over replacement player. I think right now tracking to be a warp value. Third dynasty buy for me is one I'm only advocating in best ball leagues, and that is the wide receiver out of the New England Patriots offense, Kendrick Bourne. Coming off of the loss to the Miami Dolphins, Kendrick Bourne only had four catches for 29 yards. Coming off the back of a game where he had two touchdowns, which really propelled his stats, because this name is not a sexy one, this is one that you might be able to buy relatively cheap in a lot of your leagues. In these first two weeks, they have been trailing to Philadelphia and Miami. And while that may not be the case every single week, this does look to be the wide receiver one as far as targets in a New England offense, which currently does not have Matt Patricia calling the plays. Oh, thank God. This is something something I'm interested in buying, I'll happily send a third and I'll double that price easily in best ball leagues. Two thirds for Kendrick Bourne, sign me up. This is one of the top target numbers through the first two weeks. 10 targets is his average. Now in lineup, you may be a little more concerned with what his volatility is gonna be week to week, even with a target load like that. But in best ball, I'm especially interested because all those targets, he could pop a long one. He could have a touchdown. And in best ball, I want to fill the back end of my roster with as many of these guys as possible. And I think one of the best ways to acquire him in best ball is to tear down and to tear down so far where Kendrick Bourne is not a consideration. So if you go get it first for players like Michael Pittman, you know, Drake London, things of this type where you think one for one, that first in value is appropriate, then you add on Kendrick Bourne. These are the type of moves you can make in best ball, which will significantly help you increase your depth and give you a roster that in totality is going to be very hard to beat. The majority of my leagues are best ball. And these are three guys I'm absolutely targeting in all of my best ball leagues. In lineup, I will still target Deontay Johnson as well as Russell Wilson. These are three of the people I'm actively targeting right now in Dynasty, and I think you should consider as well. Let me know, who are you targeting and who are other players that you're trying to buy right now?